What are semiconductors? Semiconductors are materials which have a conductivity between conductors general metals and insulators such as most ceramics. Common elemental semiconductor compounds are silicon and germanium. Silicon is well known of these most of the integrated circuits. Common semiconductor compounds, gallium arsenide indium antimonide. Band theory of semiconductors, the introduction of band theory happened during the quantum revolution in science. Walter Heitler and Fritz London discovered the energy bands. We know that the electrons in an atom are present in different energy level. When we try to assemble a lattice of a solid with n atoms, then each level of an atom must split up into n levels in the solid. This splitting up of sharp and tightly packed energy levels forms energy bands. The gap between adjacent bands representing a range of energies that possess no electron is called a band gap. Conduction band and valence band in semiconductors. Valence band, the energy band involving the energy levels of valence electrons is known as the valence band. It is the highest occupied energy band. When compared with insulators, the band gap in semiconductors is smaller. It allows the electrons in the valence band to jump into the conduction band on receiving any external energy. Conduction band. It is the lowest unoccupied band that includes the energy levels of positive poles, or negative, free electrons, charge carriers. It has conducting electrons resulting in the flow of current. The conduction band possess high energy level and are generally empty. The conduction band in semiconductors accepts the electrons from the valence band. Types of semiconductors. Intrinsic semiconductor. An intrinsic type of semiconductor material is made to be very pure chemically. It is made up of only a single type of element. Germanium GE, and silicon SI, are the most common type of intrinsic semiconductor elements. They have four valence electrons tetravalent. They are bound to the atom by covalent bond at absolute zero temperature. Extrinsic semiconductor. Extrinsic semiconductors are semiconductors that are doped with specific impurities. The impurity modifies the electrical properties of the semiconductor and makes it more suitable for electronic devices such as diodes and transistors. Junction diode. Properties and uses. Formation of the P-N junction. The P-type semiconductor has an excess number of holes. Therefore, holes are the majority carriers of charge in P-type semiconductors, as shown. Similarly, N-type semiconductors has an excess number of electrons. Therefore, electrons are the majority carriers of charge in N-type semiconductors, as shown. The combination of P-type and N-type semiconductors results in a junction. This combination has many applications in electronic devices. When a P-type semiconductor is suitably joined to an N-type semiconductor, a contact is established between them and is called a P-N junction. Formation of depletion region The P-N junction formed out of the P-type and N-type semiconductor separates P-type semiconductors from the N-type semiconductors. However, because of the contact, some of the electrons from the N-side enter the P-side. Similarly, some of the holes from the P-side enter into the N-side. So, at the junction, these electrons and holes combine with each other. The hole and electron neutralize each other on such recombination as shown. Therefore, in the region close to the junction, only negative ions are left behind on the P-side, and only positive ions on the N-side. This results in the formation of a narrow charged region on either side of the P-N junction. The N-type semiconductor close to the junction becomes positively charged, and the P-type semiconductor close to the junction becomes negatively charged. On either side of the junction, the region D becomes free from mobile charge carriers. That is to say, on the N-type side of D, no free electrons exist, and the P-type side of D, no holes exist. In the region of D, only immobile donor and acceptor ions exist. The region close to the PN junction is depleted of mobile charge carriers and is called the depletion region. Logic gates. 
logic gates are the basic building blocks of any digital system. It is an electronic circuit having one or more than one input and only one output. The relationship between the input and the output is based on a certain logic. Based on this, logic gates are named as AND gate, OR gate, NOT gate etc. AND gate. A circuit which performs an AND operation is shown in figure. It has an input, N equals 2, and one output. AND gate. AND logical diagram. AND truth table. Ok so we are going to study, AND logic gate truth table by simplest example. In the circuit there are two keys S1 and S2 and there is one bulb. Now the state of these components are described by ABC respectively and there are only two states of each component that is zero that means off or open and the other state is one which means close or on. Now moving to the state study when both A and B is zero that means S1 and S2 is open so bulb will not glow that means C is also zero. And when S1 state A equals to 0 and S2 state B equals to 1 we can see C is still 0, vice versa. But the moment both is S2 and S1 are closed A and B are both closed, so the bulb glows that means C is equals to 1. So does result is, C is equals to A and to B. A circuit which performs an AND operation is shown in figure. It has an input, N equals 2, and one output. A circuit which performs an OR operation is shown in figure. It has an input, N equals 2, and one output. OR gate. OR logical diagram. OR truth. Now here is, OR gate. Now here we can see that when state of S1 S2 are closed that means A and B are 0, so bulb will not glow that means state of C is 0 but once S1 or S2 or both state become 1, the bulb glows, C become 1, and we got the truth table. Hence here C is equals to A plus B, table. NOT gate. NOT gate is also known as inverter. It has one input A and one output Y. NOT GATE NOT LOGICAL DIAGRAM AND AT LAST, NOT GATE Here when A equals to 0 Then C E equals to 1 And vice versa So here C E equals to a NOT TRANSISTORS What is a transistor? A transistor is a semiconductor device used to amplify or switch electronic signals and electrical power. Types of transistors There are mainly two types of transistors, NPN transistor, and, PNP transistor. NPN transistor consists of thin section of P-type semiconductor sandwiched between two thicker sections of N-type semiconductors whereas PNP transistors consists of thin section of N-type semiconductor between two thicker sections of P-type semiconductors. Construction of transistor It consists of mainly three parts, emitter, base, and collector. Emitter is a section on one side of the transistor. It consists of moderate size and heavily doped semiconductor and is normally biased with respect to other parts of transistors and supplies majority charge carriers for the flow of current through the transistor. On the other hand base is the middle section and is very thin and lightly doped which control majority charge carriers from emitter to collector. Whereas collector is a section on other side of transistor which is moderately doped and larger in size as compared to the emitter and collects majority charge carriers for the circuit operation. Working principle of transistor In one of the most commonly used transistors, the source of water is formed by a highly doped N-type semiconductor called the source, and the end of the pipe is formed by a lightly doped N-type semiconductor called the drain. The valve is formed by a moderately doped P-type semiconductor that is sandwiched between them. This is called the gate. Now, because the semiconductors are electrically neutral, no current flows through them. We need to create an excuse for their charges to move and therefore constitute a current. When we apply a positive voltage to the gate, 
the electrons of the highly doped source are lured towards it, and the holes of the gate are repelled away from it. This gradually opens a channel from the source to the drain, which the electrons cross, thereby constituting a current. Applying a voltage to the gate is analogous to rotating the valve to remove the barrier that prevents the water from flowing from the source and out from the pipe. By varying the degree of its rotation, we can control the amount of water that flows in the pipe. This is the working principle of a transistor. Practical Applications of Transistors Applications of Semiconductor Devices they are used in the designing of logic gates and digital circuits. They are also used in analog circuits such as oscillators and amplifiers. Semiconductors are used in solar technology. Used in 3D printing machines. Temperature sensors which used in air conditioners are made with semiconductor devices. Rice cooker cook perfectly because of semiconductor control temperature precisely. Semiconductors play a central role in the operation of bank ATMs, trains, the internet, communications and other parts of the social infrastructure, such as the medical network used for the care of elderly, among other things. Used in self-driving cars. Semiconductor devices are used in computer, calculator, solar plates and other electronics devices. Semiconductors devices are used in microchips which are used in our electronics devices such as the computer, mobile etc. All types of transistor are used in building blocks of logic gates. Transistor and MOSFET are used as a switch in most of the electrical circuits. This transistor and MOSFET are built using the semiconductors. Transistor and MOSFET are made up by P-type and N-type semiconductors. After knowing the everyday uses of semiconductor here we see why semiconductors are used in daily life applications.